Six Nations 2023, folks. How much better is it watching the Six Nations when Italy is competitive? I'm going to be honest. I never used to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning to watch the Italians play. If theirs was the first game, I'd watch it later. But man, 34-20 is still a comfortable enough win for the Irish, but Italy made them work for it. We'll go through some key events and stats so you guys can let us know your thoughts. It is half past five in the morning, so I'm still going to keep the voice down a wee bit as I hope my children keep sleeping as there's still another game to watch. But yeah, Ireland, bonus point win. Um, but Italy, I think, proving that first game against the French where they pushed them uh, was no fluke. That second half where they managed to outscore England in one half of rugby uh, was also no fluke. So um, yeah, this is definitely good for the Six Nations and for Ireland. The Grand Slam is still on. They've had maximum points from their first three. And they started quick. They started quick. Um, James Lowe, just after a minute, looked to have scored. And admittedly, man, this this Irish performance left at least two, three tries out there. Uh, could have been could have been more emphatic, I guess. I mean, the first one is James Lowe, like I mentioned. Josh van der Fleer getting a wee line break early. And um, Lowe looks to be going over, but Cup Watso puts in a try-saving tackle, and James Lowe just loses control. But it doesn't really matter. This is one that maybe is a blow and dry, but they made up for it because James Ryan gets it a couple of minutes later. Basically, uh, from the 22 dropout or the the goal line dropout, um, Ireland just bring it straight back at the man. Conan with a big carry, Arky draws a couple of tacklers. He offloads. And um, sets up James Lowe, who this time, instead of going for himself, is able to set up James Ryan. So uh, it's a misconversion, but it's five points to nil. Ireland have come out of the blocks flying, and uh, we've seen a fair bit of that from them, haven't we? Um, six minutes, though. Ireland, they mucked, up the, they mucked up the restart after that initial try. So it's a little bit of a, a soft one, and we've seen a little bit of that creeping into not just Ireland, but there's a few teams who've been kind of struggling with the restart at times. This one, uh, I think it was, was it James Ryan that knocked it on? Either way, they, they mucked up the restart. It led to a scrum. The scrum had a free kick. The free kick meant there was a load of phases. Uh, Italy got the, to the, um, the number eight, Lorenzo Canone. I thought he could have offloaded because he had a big carry and seemingly a few support runners, but it didn't matter. Uh, he was able to truck it up over the advantage line. Varney's able to have a wee snipe. And um, suddenly, man, the Italians are not only on the board, but they're in the lead. So I figured going into this one, if the Italians go behind and like, you know, they go 14 points down, then the crowd's going to be out of it. And, um, you know, they're, they're going to be up against it, basically. But the fact that they managed to score relatively early despite conceding early and um, get themselves in the lead. You get the crowd into the game and it's a weird atmosphere because <laughs> you've got Italian fans who are, um, you know, chanting Italia, Italia, and then you've got the fields of Athens Rhyme being belted out by all those traveling Irish fans. So it was a really interesting atmosphere. It was almost like a neutral venue at times. But anyway, um, seven points to five, the Italians are, uh, are in the lead. So punishing an Irish mistake. And then um, Ireland... Again, in terms of the mistakes, soft penalty from the restart. I think it was Henderson. I don't even know if it was a penalty. It was a wee bit of a seatbelt. Maybe it was a little bit high. Uh, high tackle. And then um, Lorenzo Canone with another big, big carry. It was a line-out move. Um, so they were looking dangerous. But then Porter settles things down for Ireland. Wins in turnover. He's, you know, he's good at that. So the show's early intent from the Italians, which is, I thought... Really pleasing, um, but then it was Ireland's turn to you know to kind of take it up a notch. Hey, twelve minutes. It's an Irish line out. This time it's Bundy Aki with a really nice carry and some soft hands from Burn and Hansen. Get it, that man Keenan, and he's such an elusive runner. So Ireland go from being a little bit under the pump to standing under the sticks and um, slotting a conversion. So their time. Uh, chasing the game, Ireland, was <laughs> was pretty limited. They got themselves back in front pretty quick, smart. So 12 points to 7. But then again, another soft penalty. Uh, the kind of stuff you don't need to be doing. Mac Hansen gets pinged for a wee shoulder onto uh, Menoncello off the ball. And that was all from a bit of Capuazzo ambitious play from their own half. And the Italians, you got to remember, we've seen it from them, the Six Nations, kind of quite happy to sacrifice the territory 
to keep a bit of ball. Not always. Sometimes they'll play the kicking game, but um, ambitious. So this one, I mean, pretty much directly led to a three-pointer. So they managed to get a penalty, bring themselves back within two points, 12 points to 10. But then there's just madness, man. Like the, the start of this game, I can't emphasize it enough. If you haven't seen it, you need to go watch it because it was proper hell to skeleton. 19 minutes, you get Aki's try. Um, he only gets one, but he could have got two. But anyway, uh, James Lowe manages to kind of pinch a Paolo Garbisi pass. I'm not even sure if he passes it. Maybe Lowe just stripped it. But uh, Lowe ends up with the ball. He gets it to Ross Byrne, who gets it to Van der Fleer, who gets it to Lowe, who gets it to Aki. Like, the hands are um, are pretty unbelievable. And the tit for tat is just, is just mad. And um, great conversion from Ross Byrne. Um, 19 points to 10. A lot of people don't like Ross Byrne. I think it's because he doesn't carry the ball that much. He's, a, he's very much a distributor and an organizer rather than a direct ball carrier. But, I mean, we've already mentioned his name in a build-up to both the Keenan try and now the uh, the Aki try. Um, so, yeah, I guess that's, that's kind of his role more than taking the ball to the line uh, for, old, for old Ross Byrne. Um, 22 minutes, though, man. Ireland didn't exit once again. Casey's... Um, pass to James Lowe when they're trying to employ his big boot was a little bit low. Lowe should probably still be catching it down by his ankles, but he doesn't. So it's a knock on. Gives the Italians a five meter scrum. Very good attacking position, but before it was Porter, this time it's Doris uh, who manages to get the, the Irish guys out of jail. And they are good at that, man. I mean, Doris and, and Porter especially, they are very, very good at um at pinching ball at the breakdown so they managed to get that one uh 26 minutes though the irish scrum gets free kicked and then it gets pinged i think it's Beelum. uh gets pinged it's a little bit messy uh but i think it was was it casey who manages to disrupt that time so it's certainly not going dominant any particular one way both sides are having having a wee crack which is which is pretty uh, pleasing uh the tmo did have a look at a nicolo canone kind of shoulder into Craig Casey but Craig Casey kind of just ran straight into him I mean Canone turned but it seemed kind of incidental Casey seemed pretty bloody winded as you would be because there's a big size difference between those guys but um yeah I don't think he changed his footing to move in the way anyway but um <laughs> it was certainly a mismatch if nothing else uh but yeah, they were, I think it was an offside penalty anyway. So it was line-out time for for Ireland in the 22. Go through some phases. Italian defense manages to hold. Josh van der Fleer gets in the way. Andrew Porter, a little bit of frustration, I think, creeping in for um, for the Irish boys because the scoreline is certainly, you know, it's not it's not particularly lopsided. Um, Lamaro considered a soft penalty, though, when he got in front of uh, an Italian kick. So gives the Irish guys a chance. Burn. A much better touch finder this time because his previous kick had been a little bit short. Um, Bielham has to get his leg strapped up. He goes off not long later, which is kind of unfortunate because he's been having a good Six Nations thus far. But um, yeah, man, Ireland go through some phases. Uh, they tap it. Uh, they get advantage. They go back for the penalty. They tap it again. Like, they want tries. And, like, it takes a wee while to break the Italians down. But from that second tap, man, they're able to get the ball wide too fast for the Italians to cover. You can see Varney. Like he sees it coming, he's calling it, get across, get across, get across, but the ball's quicker than the guys. So, um, yeah, man, Mac Hansen's able to go over that one. It's another misconversion, but 24-10. That's starting to look a little bit more comfortable for Ireland. And then before half time, Ireland missed a chance. Was it Hansen that knocked it on? A bunch of good phases from the Irish guys, and they, they potentially could have gone in, um, you know, 30 plus points, uh, you know, in the bag. But <laughs> it's the Italians, isn't it? Pierre Bruno, who has actually looked pretty sharp in that game, uh, he manages to intercept a, uh, a pop ball from, from Bundy Aki, and he shows some wheels to go in. So it's it's 17 points for Italy, 24 Ireland at half time, which is still game on. Like Italy's behind, but they're not dead and buried by any means. I mean, Ireland has still got the bonus point. They got four tries in the first half. They continue this ability uh, to pile on the points in the first half, which they've shown this year in contrast to last year where they were more likely to score points in the second half. But yeah, it's tight, man. Run meters 339 to 328. Clean breaks five apiece. Defenders beaten is 20 to 8 in favor of the Italians. The Irish have slipped off a few more tackles than you would normally think. 
but they've been controlling the territory. 58% for Ireland in that first half, and we've seen it, as I mentioned, Italy don't mind that. Second half, though, um, Ireland win a penalty at the scrum. They opt for touch, and uh, it's a nice kick. Seven-odd seven metres out, they go for a maul. But I should say, big credit to the Italian maul defence in this one. Like, it's an area they really struggled against England, but they held up much better uh, against Ireland in this one. So the maul defence holds. Ireland go through about 11 phases. Uh, it's starting to get a bit messy. Um, they, uh, I think they knock it on. Or was it, ball became unplayable. The Italians bring on Riccione to shore up the scrum because Ferrari uh, starting to look a bit naked. Um, they get free kicked. The Italians, Ireland tap it. They go advantage again. Um, they go for touch again. It's a five meter line out. The Italians get a line out still. Like Ireland's knocking on the door. Not many teams can live with Ireland for all that, that length of time. Um, but nah, Italy do it. And um, the Irish guys can see the penalty diving on the ball. So it's an exit for the Italians. Much needed because they were under the pump at the start of that second half. Um, then Porter gives away a pretty soft penalty for um, a shot on bricks off the ball. Italy opt for a three, and suddenly they've gone from being under the pump to only four points behind, 24-20. Starting to get on the edge of the seat at this point, but for the Italians, that's the end of the scoring. So still more than a quarter of the game to go. And no more points coming Italy's way. And I think that maybe gives Ireland a bit of a wake-up call because they certainly bring it up a gear. It looks like um, Aki has scored a second try. It's Ross Byrne again with the hands to Hansen. Aki's able to kind of slide over and dot it down. But there's a wee sneaky loss of ball control in that slide. So um, Nicola Canone can be credited with, a, I guess, a try-saving tackle because he's the one who takes um, Aki's legs out in the build-up. So no try. Um, but Ireland managed to get a three-pointer about five minutes later anyway. Ryan Baird comes off the bench, wins a penalty at the breakdown. So Ireland, this is credit to the Italians, man. They have to opt for a three after being relentlessly chasing more tries. They're like, geez, we need to get back out our seven-point lead. So Boone gets that one, 27-20. Italy are looking dangerous, and I reckon there's a key, a key moment for them. Like, they needed to score. It's just 66 minutes. They had to score. Pedinelli with a big carry. Um, they go the other way. There's looking like a bit of space, but then Bricks chips it over the top for um, for Rutza, the big lock. And there's a huge in goal area at the um, Stadio Olimpico, but it's still just too big. It looked too big from his boot, to be honest. And I feel like that's something needed to come from that one. Get it, get it to be a two-point game if you miss the conversion or even tie things up and who knows what's going to happen. But nah, that's a, it's a little bit of a, a let-off. And then um, Ireland just do Ireland things, man. 70 minutes, they go like 18 phases. And when in doubt, just give it to Caelan Doris. And they did multiple times. He gets them over the advantage line. Uh, Murray's come on. He's able to get the ball to Mac Hansen, who gets his second try. So it's 34-20. That's the end of the scoring. Like Ireland, only the one try in the second half. Italy, just the one penalty. So certainly a tighter affair in the second half. I mean, Bundy Arkey considered a penalty on 74 minutes and you could hear him cursing his house out over the microphone. Stupid Bundy, stupid, or whatever he said with a, a few uh, a few swears in there as well. Um, but yeah, they, they, they lost like another line out basically on the Italian goal line. Um, James Lowe almost finished the game with the intercept, but he was put into touch. So, yeah, it's a test match, man. Love it, the fact that Italy's competitive. As I said, I never used to get up to watch these games because I knew Italy was going to get flogged. I was predicted to, it was predicted by the bookies and the forecast algorithm and whatnot that Italy would get pumped by 20-plus points for this one. So, 14-point loss, they can certainly still hold their heads high. Um, Ireland, I still think, left a few points out there. But Italy weren't without their chance as well. I mean, sure, one of their tries was an intercept, but if that bricks thing maybe goes another way, if he just kicks it a wee bit better, or if um, they maybe put it through the hands or something, keep the hold of the ball, who knows? But either way, 
Ireland, as I said, maximum points thus far in the campaign. Uh, Stats-wise, run meters 468 to 485, pretty tight. Position and territory, Ireland get the position 52-48 and territory 60-40, but especially in the second half, it was like 61% position and 63% territory for Ireland, so certainly a lot more in the second. Clean breaks, though, 6-7, to seven. Ireland with one more. Defenders beaten 27-17, that's the Italians with more, so they... Uh, Irish defence is going to be the one area they'll be maybe looking back at this one going. They slipped off a few too many. But, I mean, turnovers conceded 15 to 11. That's the Italians with the bigger number. I mean, Ireland won a lot of a lot of breakdown stuff in this game, like Doris and Porter, like I mentioned. Um, yeah, they, they were pretty dangerous. So, uh, that's, that's always a good area of this Irish team's game. A penalty count was relatively low, 10 to 9, with the Italians conceding one more. I thought the scrums kind of sped up throughout the game. There was a bit in the first half where there was a bit too much faff in a belt. But um, yeah, man, individuals, Bruno, 158 metres. A lot of that's his intercept, but still one clean break and eight defenders beaten. He's not a big guy, but he's elusive. Um, Lorenzo Canone, 63 metres and seven defenders beaten. Big shift. Lamaro, the captain, 16 from 17 tackles. Uh, Mac Hansen gets a couple of tries in his man of the match performance. Also 58 metres, a couple of clean breaks. Keenan, 82 metres and two defenders beaten. Maybe they should have gotten him. The James Lowe, four defenders, oh, sorry, four clean breaks, 93 metres, two defenders beaten. He'll be gutted he didn't get himself a try. McCloskey, 14 from 15 tackles, one of the top tacklers for Ireland. So, um, yeah, pretty interesting game. Like I mentioned, um, Ireland won't be happy. They were pushed as close as they were, but um, they can't complain with how the campaign has gone so far because it's been, it's, been it's been pretty good. Maximum points. But anyway gonna go and watch uh the welsh take on england now uh should be an interesting one. Oh, mac hansen also knocked over the microphone or knocked the microphone in his post-match interview and dropped a wee f-bomb so everything was going on in this one but um yeah you guys let us know your thoughts and um i'll talk to you guys again so yeah.